Is the mic on? So, there's all this hype around Spider-Man No Way Home, and it has me asking one question. Will this movie fix Tom Holland's Spider-Man? Because, as of right now, I think that shit is kinda whack. Spider-Man is everyone's, if not most people's, favorite superhero. I even know people that don't read comic books or watch other superhero movies, but they love Spider-Man. And people like that don't seem to mind the MCU Spider-Man for some reason. He's got the suit and the web shooter, so I guess to some people that's enough. Look, I'm not the first person on YouTube to talk about this issue. There's a whole catalog of video essays about this tragic inaccuracy of this beloved character. I may not be as big of a comic book fan as other people out there, but 80% of what I read growing up was Spider-Man. Also, the cartoons in the Sam Raimi trilogy were my shit, so to see Sony and Disney sabotage this character like that is incredibly upsetting. The point that I want to make with this video is that maybe it's not too late for them to fix this new Spider-Man. In fact, I think there's unlimited potential for this Spider-Man to be our best iteration of the character. That's if the studio plays their cards right. I say studio because, well, I don't think Disney should be anywhere near this character. If this was 2008 or even 2012, I'd say that Marvel deserved to own its most precious character. But it's 2021 now, Stan Lee's gone, and the babies at Disney have released nothing but formulaic children's movies that they call superhero movies. Look, I'm not discrediting anyone that watches those movies because I'm one of the people that still watches them. At this point, I'm watching them to review them on the channel, but I'd be lying if I didn't say they still got me kind of excited for future storylines. Look, this custody battle between Sony and Disney is very confusing. I'm actually not sure which company is sabotaging the character at the moment. I guess I find myself pointing the finger at Disney just because I've always had so much beef with them. One thing I've noticed about the Marvel movies that aren't actually affiliated with Marvel Studios is that they have a little more personality. Even Venom, a movie that's loaded with issues, is a good comic book movie. I think there's a difference between good movies and good comic book movies. And sometimes we get a little bit of both, which is really nice to see. Spider-Man Homecoming and Far From Home are both good movies. They're fun, the characters have great chemistry, they're filled with action, and they have great pacing. The only issue is they're MCU movies, not Spider-Man movies. I have no problem with Spider-Man existing in the MCU, but these movies try too hard to tell you that they're part of that universe. The whole reason everyone loves Spider-Man is because he's relatable. When he's Peter Parker, he doesn't have a billion friends, a whole lot of money, and it's never easy for him to get with a girl. We've all struggled with this in one way or another. This normal person we see under the mask is important for this character because it makes him stand out amongst all the celebrity superheroes. After the Avengers came out, those characters became celebrities in that universe. The only thing Tony Stark and I have in common is the love for whiskey and ACDC, and that's about it. Peter Parker is a normal kid that no one bats an eye at, but when he puts on his mask, he's a celebrity. The only difference is, he doesn't have a fancy suit or gadgets that were made by a billionaire, and when shit goes down, he's on his own. I always think about how big of a dipshit I was in high school, and how screwed I would be if I was Spider-Man. So seeing a teenager take on that kind of responsibility, on his own is very important for the character. Look, I probably sound like another Sam Raimi fanboy, but I honestly see a lot of flaws in those movies too. I'm okay with the cheesy comic book nature of those movies, but they suffer from poor writing in certain moments, but those movies understand Spider-Man. Even the Andrew Garfield series somewhat understands Spider-Man. At least, that series includes consequences, and it handles the fact that Spider-Man isn't supposed to be handed everything. Okay, I've ranted enough. The point that I want to make with this video is that it's not too late to fix this disaster that Sony and Disney have made. There's moments in the Tom Holland movies that I actually love, and I feel like they understand who Spider-Man is supposed to be. And I actually think Tom Holland is the best casting choice we've gotten. He does a fantastic job as a nerdy, awkward high schooler. When he's given an emotional scene, he puts on an amazing performance, and I feel like he hasn't even gotten to show his full acting range in these movies so far. 
If you watch some of the other movies he's been in, you'll see that he's capable of doing a lot more. I don't think it's fair that his Spider-Man movies have been crammed with a bunch of MCU side characters that get really, really annoying. As much as I love Nick Fury and Happy Hogan, they really piss me off in these movies. They just feel so unnecessary. Even Tony Stark pissed me off in the first Spider-Man. And that says something. I don't think Spider-Man should have any help, and I don't think that Civil War was the best place to introduce him. I hate all this. What is this guy's problem, Mr. Stark? Hey, Mr. Stark, what should I do? What we discussed. I don't think Spider Man's supposed to know what to do when he's in danger. He's supposed to be on his own, figure things out on his own. There has to be consequences. Okay, I'm gonna try to stop ranting for a second. It's really, really difficult not to rant about this. So, here's some of the things that made me believe in Tom Holland's Spider Man. There's actually several moments in Homecoming that I truly enjoyed. I love when Peter makes the choice to leave his date at the dance so he can go and do the right thing. And in doing that, that creates consequences, and that's such an important part of this character. And the moment where the building collapsed on him was such an important moment because that was when he realized he was on his own and he had to push himself to keep going. He didn't have any special technology from Tony Stark or anything like that, he just had to make his way out and I think that was such an important part for the character. And then he's given back the Tony Stark suit, which I don't fucking understand. What was wrong with him just knitting one? I kinda like that, I mean it's not super realistic, but like, in the original movies it was cool when he like made his own suit. They could have even had him buy some red and blue yoga pants off of Amazon or something, I don't fucking know. But I will say that after Homecoming ended, I had hope for this character. But I think Far From Home set him back even further. I like the beginning of it whenever it started by setting Peter up to be on his own and he's missing Tony Stark, but this still led to his movie getting bombarded by Nick Fury and Happy Hogan and all this stuff about Iron Man, and it just made no sense to me. Having Peter make a suit with Stark tech while playing ACDC was so disrespectful to the character. Iron Man is done and they need to stop incorporating him into literally everything. So where do we go with this Spider-Man now? Well, if they're introducing the multiverse, that could be very beneficial for this character. If Sony takes back Spider-Man again and sends him to another universe or something where there's no one to help him from the MCU, that could be very interesting. I'd love to see them take this spoiled Iron Man Jr. and turn him into a real Spider-Man. I don't want any more mentor type characters, but I would like Tom Holland's Spider-Man to be inspired by Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man because maybe he'll learn from them and see what it's like to do things on your own and not have all these people help you all the time. I feel that there's so much they could do to sort of restart the origin story for this Spider-Man because I'd love to see that. I honestly think Tom Holland's the best casting choice we've ever gotten, but they need to stop making him this helpless little kid that's handed everything. I think he should be this character that learns how to do things on his own and actually matures. But we'll see if the studio really cares about that. I mean, as long as they're making billions of dollars, I don't think they'll really give a shit about changing the character, so... We'll see. I think it would be really cool to see this Spider-Man in his own universe fighting against Morbius and Venom and all the other solo villains that they plan on setting up. I love the idea of watching this Spider-Man mature over a long span of movies because they've never done that for Spider-Man before. I mean, it looks like Tom Holland's gonna have a lot more movies as this character, so I'm curious to see where they go with that. I just want to see one of the most iconic comic book heroes get the movies that he deserves. We'll see what happens. If you have an idea for another character I should rant about, let me know in the comments down below. I've done one about the MCU Thor and now MCU Spider-Man, so might do another MCU character, or maybe DC, something like that. But I like ranting about MCU characters because they kind of annoy me. One of the next ones I'm going to do will be Mark Ruffalo's Hulk because to me, that character is dog shit. So uh, yeah, bye.